Today we're going to go over the interactive Tableau report for pipeline performance in Alberta that has pipeline incidents information including up to the end of 2017. Um, the tool includes five technical tabs and a notes on the data and a glossary. So we're going to go through the functionality of each one of these tabs. Um, we're going to start off with the first tab which is a 10 year trend of pipeline incidents in the province. Okay, so the first tab, the 10 year trend here shows the pipeline incidents in the province over the last 10 years. The blue line is an increasing trend of the pipeline length or inventory in the province and if you hover you can get an information tag that shows the, the, the length and values in each year. The downward decreasing gray uh, line is the pipeline incidents in the province which again you can get an information tag for any of the years that you hover. All the information that's in the figure is actually in this table as well, all the values of incident numbers and lengths. And I'm going to show some of the other functionality here. So you can take the incidents and you can break them by their consequence level and see that the, the green line here being low consequence incidents, um, the yellow line being medium consequence incidents, and the red line being high consequence incidents. Um, you can actually view it by uh, counts or by ratio and it's defaulted to just show incidents under the AER's jurisdiction. Um, you can just look at particular incident types if you just want to look at just high consequence or you want to just look at low consequence. And you can filter out different types of incident types. So some new incident types this year are the GSPT release which is gasket sealing packing threaded fitting releases which are the drips on mechanical tightened uh, flanges and such. Um, we have hits, installation leaks, leaks and ruptures, and if you take any of these off, you can just view the data for just leaks and ruptures, for example, here. Now we're going to go on to tab two. So the second tab is the company data, so the pipeline incident information by licensee. Um, these are the filters at the top. Um, we have a couple defaults, um, so it's defaulted to 2017 incident information, it's defaulted to the AER as the regulator. Um, we have it defaulted um, to just include leaks and ruptures and GSPT releases and hits have been defaulted off. And the, for the failure types, we have defaulted off damage by others, but all these can be um, added back in if you so desire. Um, we're going to go into what this figure and how it actually works. So um, this figure is really useful when you create a peer group. So I'm going to make a peer group with this length category filter and just do the little demo here with just greater than 5,000 um, operators. So these would be pipeline operators with greater than 5,000 kilometers pipeline length. So the figure has the pipeline licensees on the, on the left here. And then it has four columns. The first column is the pipeline length with the inner bar that's dark blue being the operating permitted length with the lighter, uh, larger bar being the total pipeline length for that licensee. Um, this can be uh, sorted using the little sort button at the bottom here to rank from the largest to the smallest. Um, the second column is the number of pipeline incidents which again can be ranked using the little sort button there. And the, the incident count has been fractionated by the number of incidents by each consequence layer. So uh, as before, green being low consequence, uh, yellow being medium consequence, and red being high consequence. So these are the number of incidents uh, for each of these licensees and the respective consequence um, value. You can see that the third column here is the incident ratio or incidents per thousand kilometers and this is really taking this incident count and dividing it by the pipeline length for that operator and you can see that the lighter one is the ratio for operating length and the darker uh, broader bar is for the incident ratio when considering the total length of pipeline kilometers for that operator. Um, you can sort by the last column here as well, which is the total volume released. And the column for the volume released is fractionated just like the incident count by the consequence rating of that incident. So the red coming from the volume released from high consequence incidents, yellow being medium consequence incidents, and green being low consequence incidents. 
Um, the peer groups um, can be customized by going over to the total length. And if, for example, I put 1,000 um, or let's go 10,000, it will make a peer group that's of that. So it's just going to be operators bigger than 10,000. And you can customize that to make that whatever peer group you think um, is appropriate. Um, we're going to do an example to show how you can display operators that have had zero incidents. So I'm going to select the 1,000 to 5,000 kilometer peer group. So this is operators that have pipeline length in between that. And I just got to reset that length bar there. Okay, so this is showing um, the licensees in that peer group. And we're going to sort it by, and you can see that some of these um, operators that are being displayed have zero incidents. And that's because this filter here has been put to uh, zero. And you got to ensure that this uh, NA under incident consequence type is checked. Um, so that's the main functionality for this tab, and I'm going to move on to the third tab. So the third tab, uh, titled Field Center, is the same as the company data. So it has the licensees in the same four columns as before. So the pipeline length, the incident count, the ratio, and volume. The only different um, functionality with this tab is that we have the ability to be able to display the information by Field Center. So you see this additional filter here. Um, by default, it's on all. So we're seeing all the field center uh, pipeline incident information for 2017 by default. If we go over to this little plus minus symbol here, we can compress the field centers to just their aggregated value and see how they rank against each other. So now that um, you can compare the field centers against each other, you can see where the pipeline length is by field center, the pipeline incidents, and you compare them by their incident ratio or the volume released by Field Center. Um, you can again, you can rank by each one of these uh, columns just by clicking on the little sort button at the bottom. So this is ranking by the total incident count by highest to lowest. And again, the incidents are fractionated by their consequence. So red being high consequence, yellow being medium consequence, and green being the number of low consequence pipeline incidents. Um, if we want to look at the pipeline incidents for a particular field center, we go back up to the display by field center filter and click on Bonneville, for example, and we'll see just the pipeline incidents in Bonneville. So now we're just looking at Bonneville. We'll have to go over to that little plus minus expansion button again, and expand it out, and we'll see all the licensees with uh, pipeline incidents and pipeline length for the Bonnie Field Field Center for 2017. So for Bonneville, we can go and we can look at and rank by the total number of pipeline incidents in the Bonneville area, or we can compare by incident ratio or liquid volume released um, as before. And you can pick any field center and uh, do this sort of deep dive in the pipeline incidents for that. Um, you can also add 2016 data by clicking on here and see how a field center has uh, for pipeline incident information going over 2016 and the 2017 years. So you can see Bonneville Field Center, the pipeline licensees, their length, their pipeline incidents, ratios, and liquid volume released for 2016 and 17 for just the Bonneville Field Center. And you can do this for any of the field centers. So now we're going to go on to the third tab, Liquid Release Volume tab. So the Liquid Release Volume tab has three different figures that tell the Liquid Release Volume story. Um, it has a lot of the same filters we've seen before, year, regulator, you can search by licensee, incident consequence rating. Um, and again, it, you can select by the field center, just like the incidents by licensee tab we've already went over. Um, it's defaulted to all, so it's showing the incidents uh, liquid release volume for the entire province. And we're going to go through each one of the figures here. So the first figure has the 
the count of the number of incidents that had a liquid release volume that falls into these different bins. So, for example, this is saying that there was 85 pipeline incidents in 2017 that released one to less than five cubes of liquid uh, release volume. Um, this here shows the liquid release volume for 2017 and how much of it was salt or produced water and how much of it was liquid hydrocarbon. The third figure shows that liquid release volume, what incidents and licensees uh, behind those incidents did it come from and the amount. So you can see this is a large salt water release and that each one of these releases were primarily salt water with a little bit of hydrocarbon liquid and that we have six incidents here with greater than 400 cubes and then it, you keep scrolling to see all the incidents that had liquid release volumes in 2017. We, if you scroll back up and we select multi years by going and clicking all under the years, we can see how this trend has changed over the years or remained the same in some cases. So for the histogram, we can see that it's very consistent to how many incidents we have in some of these bin categories. For example, there's always between two and three of this in this large category. And same with some of these other categories, it's very similar from year to year. But some of these categories have slight changes. Um, you can compare the total liquid release volume um, by year. So we can see that 2017 was very similar to 2016 in total release volume, but that it was significantly less than 2015. And then we can see all the years, um, the individual release volumes for the different incidents and how they kind of compare against each other. Um, you can go in here and instead of looking at the whole province, you can look at it for just a particular field center. We're going to pick Bonneville again. And we can see how the different liquid release uh, volume count by bin is for Bonneville, what their total liquid release volumes have been over the last three years, and what incidents they've had that have had liquid release volumes. Um, if we click on all, we can go in and we can see how a particular licensee um, has information in these same figures. And that's it for this tab, so we're going to go on to the next one, which is the Details and Incident Ratio tab. So the Details and Incident Ratio tab has um, two tables and a bunch of filters at the top here. So how this works is we have a display filter that, ha that manipulates what we're seeing uh, in the table for the y-axis here. And you can see that you have several different options. You also have all these different filters, so it allows for a lot of different combinations. But we're just going to go through a couple of the common ones. So if I display by uh, field center, and by, uh, you can see all the different field centers in the y-axis here and their pipeline incidents in 2017, and they're, they're broken out by consequence, so low, medium, and high consequence. It's also showing the length, so this would be the pipeline length in Bonneville, for example, and what the incident ratio is. Um, if I click on substance category, for example, it's going to change the y-axis in the table to the substance category that the pipelines are licensed to, so natural gas, oil well effluent, or salt water, you can see how the number of pipeline incidents by their consequence rating, and you can see the amount of pipeline length that is, for example, crude oil or um, natural gas pipelines, and that will calculate a ratio for comparison. Um, you can go over and look at materials and do a similar sort of analysis um, to see how many pipeline incidents happen on steel, composite, aluminum, um, what the length of inventory is for those different types of materials, and what the uh, incident ratio is when you divide the incident count by the total length. Um, we, you can do it by 2016 and 17, and you can view this information by licensee, and you can also query it to just look at it for a particular field center as well, if you were just interested in that, this information for one field center. Um, 
The second uh, table displays the failure types. So we can see on the y-axis, these are the different failure types for the behind the pipeline incidents, such as internal corrosion, and what the number of pipeline incidents that were uh, due to that failure type by their consequence rating, the amount of, and then again, it's just taking the total pipeline inventory in this case and making a ratio out of it. Um, again, all these filters at the top, such as licensee, field center, um, will query both of the tables. So the last tab that we're just going to quickly go over is the glossary tab. So this has the definitions of a lot of the terms that we use throughout the report. So for the incident consequence rating, we have the different indicators behind what's determined to be a high or a medium or a low consequence pipeline incident. We have other definitions such as the different types of failure types, such as internal corrosion or damage by others. And we have some information here on the definitions between the different types of incident types we've included, such as um, the G GSPT release or the pipeline uh, hit or a leak. And then we have some information about the pipeline specifications that we've included um, as well. And that concludes this presentation.